Hey everyone, it's Jeff and welcome back to my channel. Today we have Summit Games Fest officially kicking off for the June period and it's basically like Christmas for gamers. I'm so excited about the slew of games that have been announced so far. They did show Metaphor and they did show Monster Hunter Wilds, which uh, is looking pretty good. And then Atlas even went a step further and basically gave us another introduction or another showcase for Metaphor Re Fantasia. And today we will basically be reacting to that. So it is Metaphor Re Fantasia Atlas Exclusive 2 uh, showcase. Uh, today I think we're showcasing more about the archetypes and more about the combat, which is I'm sure everyone really wants to know about that. So I'm super excited, I'm super pumped. So definitely don't forget to leave a like on this video. It definitely helps out the channel a bunch. It makes you know the videos discoverable for the YouTube algorithm and it just helps our community on this channel grow. Super appreciative of all you guys' support on all the videos. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, and yeah, it's just been awesome. And don't forget to subscribe for more Metaphor, for more Persona, for more JRPGs, Monster Hunter, anything you can name. So thanks again for watching and uh, let's get straight into the showcase. Ah, the music is already so good. Metaphor re Bantasio, one of my highly anticipated games of 2024. Oh, it just looks so good. So there was a new trailer as well, the Awaken trailer, um, which I will be uploading to my channel. Archetype job system, nice. Here we go. I'm super excited. Hello everyone, I'm Katsura Hashino, the director of Metaphor Refantasio. You may know some of my previous work, including Shin Megami Tensei 3. Yes, we do. Three, four, and five. <laughs> Summer Game Fest held in Los Angeles, California. We announced there are 14 archetype lineages, which amount to more than 40 archetypes. So I wasn't really sure what they were talking about there, so I assume, you know, they're just going to explain it now. But yeah, there are over 40 uh, archetypes in this game. Metaphor Refantasio Showcase. We will dive deeper into the different types of archetypes and how to use them. For those who haven't watched, in our previous showcase, we introduced the overall game flow. We will continue to reveal new content on Metaphor Refantasio on our Atlas YouTube channel, so please be sure to subscribe. <laughs> they're like, they're, they're, doing what, they're doing what we do, guys. Just make sure you subscribe. All right, let's get started. Battle system overview. Oh, here we go. I'm so excited. Battle basics. Battle system introduced in the previous live stream. So yeah, you got fast and squad. Oriented battle system where enemies of lower rank are defeated through real-time action, allowing you to proceed at a quick pace. Nice. And then you get squad, which we know, and then you get that sick transition. You do quite a lot of damage, actually. 1,000? Jesus Christ. 3, 4, 6. This is a lot of damage. Oh, that's cool. So when you when you scan the enemy, it actually shows you the strength, uh, attack, defense, and agility decreases. Which, I mean, I, I know it does in the other games as well, but sometimes you need to analyze or, or do a little scan thing. That... I cut. Wait, what? Wait, hang on a second. I need to first of all bump up the volume. But what did he say? The Academia? Is it not Academia? <laughs> first introduced the facility known as the Academia. The Academia. Okay, cool. The Academia. Now, where was I? In the early stages of the story, the protagonist gains access to a mysterious location called Academia. Oh, this looks see, dope. It's a place adorned with a plethora of books. Ooh, I'm liking the music. I'm liking the soundtrack. Has high hopes for the protagonist awakened awakened archetypes. Oh, there's a cat. He is well versed in archetype knowledge and will lend his support to the protagonist's journey. Ah, so here we go. Kila, Sika, Nice. In lineages such as this one. Lineages. As they are acquired during the journey. Okay. This is a game screen from the early stages of the story. So right now we only have access to the initial archetypes with basic skills. Okay. But once you're able to swap archetypes, the real game, game strategy, strategy begins. begins. Okay. Cool. Cool. Details on how the protagonist comes to. Oh, the music is so good. Detail in it's so good. Updates. So please look forward to it. All right. Cool. Now I'd like to introduce the types and characteristics of archetypes. Hero well incense. About the oh, they probably can. We got incenses now. Some that have not yet been revealed. It's just like Persona, guys, right? <laughs> Archetype lineage, nice. In the last live stream, we introduced the different types of archetypes, including some of the foundational ones. The versatile seeker, who is a well-rounded archetype. The yeah, mage, got wind. Who the enemy's weak points. Blizz, so seek Blizz. Skilled in abilities like Bukaru and uh, Bufu. Excels in physical attacks using their fists. 
Nice. Slicer, Diana Slash, Heat Up. Ooh. Sword attacks. Sword attacks. Cool. Nice. Oh, you've got like a taunting ability. That's cool. The commander with skills related to formation and support. Oh, nice. Gunner? And the faker with tricky moves. I can already see as myself doing a guide on how to farm money with that dude. <laughs> archetypes such as the masked dancer, whose skills and resistances can be freely changed with equipment. The okay. Singer, who is perceived as a okay, look, there's a lot of shit that's going on at the moment. Uh, I probably will rewind to capture um, most of the stuff, but I'm just going to go through it basically first of all. And if you want my thoughts and opinions, we can you can come back afterwards. So I just don't want to break up the pacing. But so far, it looks really, really interesting. Um, it looks like there is a wider variety. I think a lot of people were a bit, probably a little bit worried about the variety of, of, of archetypes because they're obviously not exactly like Personas, right? Um, but yeah, it seems like there's enough variety for the for the gameplay and battle strategy, which is good. Games with its power to summon monsters. And the berserker who has tremendous destructive Holy power. crap, he just annihilated an entire like lineages. People with like six twenty damage. Like what? Are added up. In total, there are more than forty archetypes available. Oh, uh, so you also need Madge or Mag to unlock them? Okay. Archetype evolution. Yes, this is the thing that I was a, a bit curious about. I was like, what do you mean evolution? There's a wide variety of skills with different attributes and ranges. Oh, the menus. Oh, I mean, just look at how stylish this game is, guys. This is, look at this is awesome. Mastering these skills allows players to gain an advantage in battles. Furthermore, as archetypes evolve through growth, Tarakaja, to higher, tier higher tier archetypes. Interesting. While the archetypes like the ones introduced earlier are unlocked as the base archetype of each lineage. Progressing them through battle and strengthening bonds with supporters encountered on the journey is crucial. Okay. This system unlocks conditions for acquiring, acquiring even, even more advanced, advanced archetypes, archetypes, providing substantial depth in party development for players to enjoy mm. and experience. Okay, so you unlock the base of the lineage, and then I assume you just for need to example, keep ranking them up. The seeker, which first awakens for the protagonist, is a lineage in the seeker category. Yeah, there we go. Cool. And by deepening the bond with the, the supporter who controls this lineage, the character can evolve into the magic, magic seeker, seeker. Okay. Who wields powerful wind magic, as well as reinforcement support and passives, and then onto soul hacker, who has powerful magic such as. Oh, that's cool! It's like Pokemon, guys. <laughs> that's the dope. Gunner, who can shoot from a distance is a heroic figure in the ranged category and can evolve into Sniper, who is good at all target attacks. No way! Dragoon, who can trigger attacks with various magical attributes by deepening the bond with the- Oh, that is dope. That is sick. So you're telling me, like, uh, like when they say evolution, it makes sense, right? That like you can just, you unlock the base lineage one and then you keep going. But did you see the gunner? He turned into the j the j j Dragoon? By deepening the bond with the supporter who controls this lineage. Look how strong that attack was. That's a multi-hit attack and it's doing like 300 per... Oh my god, the damage scaling in this game. Okay, this is this is really cool. Oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. Each archetype variation is uniquely crafted with dedicated artwork and the appearance of each character changes based on the equipped art. Oh, that's so, so I think cool. You'll enjoy the work very much. Oh, I definitely will. I 100% will. That's awesome. This was created with the cooperation of guest creators, including Koda Kazuma for yeah. background concept art and Ikuto Yamashita for the Gauntlet Runner design. Yeah. The archetype designs boasting over 40 variations. Oh, yeah, who are they designed by? Designed by Shigenori Soeji, oh! who is in charge of character design. Wow, wow. Also by Yuji Himukai. Etrian. Oh, from. Oh, really? Etrian That's Odyssey cool series. from the Etrian Odyssey series. Yes, yes, 100%. The Etrian Odyssey series is a dungeon crawling RPG. Oh my god, look at it design. Dude, seriously, like Sojima and. And, the fact that we and have oh mate from Etrian Odyssey, like 100%. Design of the series is not only impressive, but also an appropriate element. Really impressive. That, that dude was a martial artist. Did you see him just punch the dude? Well. Archetype battle system. I can't believe, like, how long are we in? We're, we're only in seven minutes, guys. Oh my god.
this is awesome. system that allows you to transform at any time during a battle and activate their skills after entering a turn-based battle with the squad button. Today I would like to introduce the archetype battle system. Oh, it's so crisp. Look how clean it is. Players can stun enemies with fast action before engaging in advantageous squad mm. turn-based battles. Which makes However, sense. If attacked by enemies first, the turn-based battle will begin with a disadvantage. Players who prefer certainty in their attacks or struggle with action sequences should not try to take on the enemies through fast battle, but rather use Oh, the you, squad you can just immediately go to squad. Okay. Combat. That makes sense. That makes sense. On the situation, players are encouraged but I mean it's just like the um high reward combat and low risk low reward strategies um the squad battle is a I can't remember the name off the top of my head now <laughs> in this system okay. the number of actions per turn is determined by the number of party members and the number of actions oh. increases if the enemy's weak points are exploited oh yeah so it's like press turns so cool strategize your next move wisely yeah you can eliminate enemies unilaterally without giving them a turn however this system is a double-edged Oh, so yeah. For the okay, cool. So it is, ba so it basically it's the press tone system from SMT. Cool. And then these little while. crystal things are the ones that, um, that show you the turn and the enemy turn. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. To challenging battles. Metaphor is an evolution of our command battle system that has been cultivated over the years. Mm. And it's innovative archetype system. It is quite smooth and fast-paced, to be fair. So it looks good. I think we're in the clear. In command battle, oh, I just players can change the party. I love the UI. The UI is like so good. Oh, front of that optimal position of strength. For example, the mage can cast magic from the back row to compensate for its weak point, low defense, to some extent, maintaining its attack power. Whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on a second. Okay, 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 hang on a second. Hang on a second. So, you got yield, turn, guard, synthesis, team up melee and archetype so you can go front to back as well okay i really okay i need sorry i need to has watch this game position of strength okay for example the mage can cast magic from the back so you can you can change on the fly which is pretty cool extent, maintaining its attack power the knight can withhold its attacks and attract enemy attacks from the back row and therefore induce enemy attacks with minimal damage. Ah, uh, okay. So if you're going to the back, then it's basically meaning that you can up your resistances. specializes in long range attacks from the back row. The commander can change the formation of all members with its skills, allowing each player to freely create their own strategy. Oh, that's really, that's really cool. This? Oh, synthesis, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Synthesis, which means integration in psychological terms, is a system that allows archetypes to combine with other party members' archetypes. It can activate a special technique that oh. is not available otherwise. So they're like combo moves. Skill, it consumes more than a normal action as it consumes an additional action from your ally's turn as well. Ah. This technique is more powerful for that reason. For example, while a mage and That's a cool. can only target a single enemy with their attack, with the use of synthesis, the target can be changed to all enemies. No. The seeker's main attack is wind magic. But by using synthesis, the seeker can use attacks with attributes that are normally unavailable to it. Oh, wow. Or strike. Okay, okay. In addition, warriors are good at physical the, the, It just seems like you've got so many options in combat, which is something that, like, I'm sure if you play, like, SMT Persona, having options in combat is, is really, really good. That can be unleashed by but obviously it, de it really depends on the balance and everything because I know a lot of people are going to start complaining this does, does this make it too easy and if used properly it can eliminate the enemies all at once hmm. the activation conditions change depending on the combination of the party okay so it is a fun element to try out different configurations and discover new synthesis combinations moreover the development team has worked hard to ensure that the diverse range of archetypes remains engaging skill. even in the later stages, allowing players to enjoy different compositions. We aimed for a balance to avoid a situation where players' party compositions become similar as the game progresses. Yeah, which let's where only certain archetypes are used. Yeah, let's be honest, like late game Persona 4, like it was basically Trumpeter, <laughs> Yoshitsune, and nothing else. Like seriously, that was all you. That was all you had. Late game P5, it was like you know, you, you, yeah, like 
Anyway, and then SMT as well. I'm sure you have, have like, you know, all your, all your demons and whatnot, like Artemis and, and all that sort of stuff in there. Um, it does get pretty samey, and it, it's, it's just purely because they're just powerful, right? They're just the most powerful in the game. But it's cool that they know that, or at least acknowledge that, that that's the case with those games. And it's trying to something different, I assume? When players change from one archetype to another, they can inherit the skills they have already mastered to the new archetype. I have a few skills. Okay. The command battle system not only includes action count strategies, but also formation tactics, special moves called synthesis, and a skill inheritance system, mm. providing numerous ways to creatively... Okay, so they didn't really do too much in that one, but While the party uh, we'll see how it goes. Initially. It can expand to seven as the story progresses. Cool. It's confirmed All now. Members can equip any of the forty plus archetypes, so we hope players enjoy developing their unique. Oh, strategies. you can change at any time. That's cool. Fast battle actions based on archetypes. Oh. How to use archetypes in command battles. Let's discuss how archetypes abilities. No way! That's so cool. That's actually so cool. So if you have brawler equipped, you punch people. If you have the dragoon equipped, you like stab people. Oh, that's sick! That's so dope. That is so dope. One-handed sword allows for quick, successive strikes to deal damage to enemies. Because I'm not gonna lie, the fast combat did look a little bit like gimmicky, more so than anything. The archetype of your party members as well from each tree. But the fast action is a move specific for the protagonist. So we want you to try out not only the command battles, but also the strategic action. Oh, that's so cool. Warrior's great sword, its large swing delivers oh, that's so cool. That is so good. Is not susceptible to preemptive strikes from enemies. Oh, oh the they even give you abilities. Staff, the attack range, range extends. extends not only forward, but also around the user, making it effective in situations where the player is Oh, snap! It can wipe out many monsters when outnumbered and outclassed. Oh, Faker! Additionally, League of Legends. That can use ranged weapons. The Faker can throw knives, and the Gunner uses a crossbow. Oh, that's cool. From a safe oh, that's cool. That's actually Any such a cool detail, seriously. ...characteristics and weaknesses. For instance, you might use a gunner with long distance attack range to take down flying foes. However, if you choose the protagonist's archetype focusing mainly on fast action, he will fight with that archetype when you enter. Yeah, so battle. it kind of gives you an you like choice in the, in the squad, squad battle. battle. Yeah, yeah. So it's important to plan ahead of time. We hope that everyone will uh, enjoy yeah, the okay, okay. squad combat. That's cool, that's cool. So yeah, it really depends on the balance now because I feel like a lot of these options, while they're really cool and I I welcome them and I and I really hope some of these options come to P P six like seriously, um, if it if the, if it does it does kind of I, I can see where people are coming from now like it might make the game a bit easier just because you can swap party members at any time because in P five for example you need to unlock that ability right you can't you can't just do it willy nilly you need to unlock that ability. Which means you need to, you know, spend time with that social link or that confidant. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll see. But it looks really good. I, I, I'm really loving it now. Many familiar creatures from fantasy worlds Ooh, are dungeons. In nice. modern design. Some enemies that ambush you, some that hide underground. Everfrost forest. There are no dungeons that require a specific type of archetype party. So please enjoy trying out various party strategies mm, of your which choice. Which is good, because forced things or forced choices is not Although, good. Oh, snap. There are tough enemies and bosses that force you into battles. At least boss battles? This happens, the type of party you bring will affect the battle. Draw steel, we are spotted. Monsters called humans are especially tricky to face, so beware. We think you will enjoy planning strategies for the battles ahead. Oh, is Grius a party member? Moreover, oh, I think so. Holy oh, shit. Oh my god, that fish with and the like fact human legs? The difficulty level varies depending on which quest you conquer first can affect the perceived difficulty of battles. And a slight error in judgment can be fatal in this battle. The difficulty mm. of the game can be changed at any time. And by using the retry feature, 
you'll be able to return to the top of the battle and take on the challenge again with okay. other strategies you might have thought of. I mean, if you it, uh, once again people are going to be complaining but in a way that ensures all players can confidently take on the challenges. If you don't like it just don't use it, right? So Additionally, yeah. A network feature allows players to view the party compositions used by- LOL, someone's at level 99, they're probably singing like, oh yeah, this quest is like, yeah, what, 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 what do other people use? Oh wait, hang on a second, why are everyone else using level 99 characters? But anyway, that's, that's cool. Available to view at any time. With the press of a button, you can instantly switch to those compositions, making it easier to adapt and strategize. Oh! That's interesting. What if you don't actually have the I'm required sure level or requisite level? I'm sure playing classic job change games based on the recommended information of specific party setups for certain dungeons. <laughs> That's true. This a lot of RPG does like that. modern version of that kind of playstyle. Again, all, probably not going to use it for my first playthrough, but we'll see. How other players are progressing in the dungeon they are currently conquering. Using their own party composition. Oh, I'm just loving the art style. The music. It, like all the aspects of it just looks so good it looks so good oh i love so, this what did you think? this is the battle theme In this video we have introduced the various types and uses oh my god i i'm just gonna rewatch this like over and over again i'm not gonna lie guys this is really sick this is really really cool rpg based on its unique job system which is a staple in fantasy rpgs We've added various unique features into Metaphor, from the system and volume to its visuals, and we hope that you will enjoy this fantasy. Jesus, RPG. look at that boss! Oh, don't, don't, don't you worry, Katsura Hashino. I'm going to enjoy the shit out of this. October 11th, 2024, and is open for pre-orders. Starting today. The music is so good. I'm so happy that this is the battle theme. <laughs> the battle theme is so dope. It's seriously so good. You guys really need to listen to it. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah, physical stand edition. Will receive pre -order bonuses. But I already got the Ami Ami Collector's Archetype Edition locked in. I hope. In I, I'm pretty sure I do. Thank you for your yeah, actually, I might consider doing this. I'll see what the we'll Japanese one collects. Because I really want the 35th anniversary, the like, physical edition. Um, but I do kind of want that cloth map and steel book as well, so if I'm being honest. Were interested in the battle system in the last live stream. Oh yeah, hundred percent, mate. <laughs> so finally, next time, we would like to introduce not only the game. Ooh, play, story. But also the world. Nice, side, nice. When is that gonna be, Mr. Hashino? We have been elaborating in our first attempt at a fantasy RPG. It already this looks bloody awesome. Full of twists and turns. So please stay tuned for the next exclusive. That's cool. That's really exciting. Metaphor is planned to be released on October 11th. Which is the same as DBZ Spark Zero sure as well, guys. So we uh we definitely list. getting spoiled in October, that's for sure. Thank you very much for your time today. No, 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 thank you. Thank you, Hashino-san. <laughs> Cause that was awesome. Oh, I think this is the uh the trailer. Oh, okay, so I guess I probably won't upload it to my channel then <laughs> if it was just reacted to the trailer now. We oppress. We fight. Damn. Studio Zero. Evil flows through this land. You have found a way to wield true magic. True magic in the archetypes. So yeah, this is the Awaken trailer, so it just shows off the archetypes a bit more. Many more protectors and followers. But it's looking absolutely dope. Remind people. Ah, oh, the menus, guys. Seriously, I didn't realize Heisman was like a like a bat creature. I thought he was just some person with like massive eyeballs. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, the damage scaling is really strange because it, it seems to be very like SMT Persona esque, where the damage you're not doing ridiculous damage, not like Final Fantasy, we're doing like 10k damage or whatever. But from what I've seen, you know, especially that multi-hit Gunner when you evolve the uh, Gunner class. Um, it seems to be doing like a lot, a lot of damage. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited to play this, seriously. I, I cannot wait to play this game. I'm going to be having a full Let's Play walkthrough on my channel. Um, and then I'm going to do guides. I'm just going to pump out content when this game comes out. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so excited. I, I think 
it's just really cool. Like seriously, like you've got the archetype lineages, right? So you've got the archetype lineages and then you can archetype evolution. And then, you know, you've got your seeker, which can then turn into a mage seeker, which then can turn into like the ultimate seeker or, or whatever they called it. Oh, and a dragoon the, and the designs by Sojima-san. Oh, it's it's going to be good. So yeah, that's uh, that's the second uh, Atlas exclusive for Mena 4 Reef Fantasio. Definitely pre-order if you're super excited about this game. Definitely subscribe to the channel, just like what Mr. Hashina said. Um, yeah, just, just subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay up to date with everything to do with Persona, uh, SMT, and JRPGs, or just RPGs in general, guys. Um, I'll be doing a lot more Let's Plays coming up on the channel as well so um get super pumped i'm super pumped for this game um thanks everyone again for watching uh, definitely check out uh the the uh the, the showcase uh, yourselves um i will be re-watching it just because it shows off a crap ton of gameplay um and it looks absolutely awesome so thanks for watching everyone and i'll catch you guys in the next video